Many of us have heroes. Many of us could describe ourselves as fans. And in modern times, if you're a fan, there are many ways you can express this. You could collect autographs. You can take a selfie with your hero, maybe. You could even put a poster on the wall. But in the 19th century, if you were a true fan, you expressed it in a rather unusual way. And this way has resulted in some amazing precious documents. Have a look at these. These are two giant scrapbooks. And they've been put together by fans of two of the most famous scientists of all. And we're going to show you inside them because what's in these books is amazing. Here's Keith, head librarian at the Royal Society. Now, this book is dedicated to Sir Isaac Newton. It is, and it's one of six identical volumes. And that's really a fanboy. All right, we'll move this blue one out of the way and come back to this. Here we go. Well, that's just general prettiness, but let's crack on. These initial pages are quite loose, but here's the title page. This tells us that this is a collection of, of Newtoniana, engraved portraits of Isaac Newton and many other things besides, arranged and compiled by Charles Turner. Charles Turner was Lincoln associated, as Newton was, of course, and actually the family owned Woolthorpe Manor, which is the, the birthplace of Isaac Newton. Turner is a scientist himself, he's an astronomer, and he put together these volumes about his great hero. So basically, living up in Lincolnshire, Charles Turner owns the house that Isaac Newton grew up in yep. and just became a, a little bit obsessed with Isaac Newton. Just a tad, yes. And put together this amazing collection. You can see there's a running text, but it's broken up by not just engraved images of Newton, but original pencil drawings of things associated with him. So there are original works of art in here, original manuscripts too. How would Turner have got his hands on all this? Was he just like this frenzy of collect? Would he have been going all over London and buying everything he, he could? And he did collect, yes. But he also commissioned artists to go and draw things where he knew there was something associated with Newton. There seems to be a real obsession with people's houses in these books, I notice. Yeah, it's the places where uh, people lived, very important. So this is, is Walsall Manor with uh, many of the internal features still intact as, as Newton might have known them. He collected documents too, so there's a Newton signature on this one. And it's, it's just a receipt. So wow. lots of documents. And finally here, a genealogy and Isaac Newton's coat of arms, very, very beautifully painted. How does this book rank among your Newton documents? Is this like your go-to place if you need something, you need to do some research? Yes, I mean, if, if you need imagery to do with Isaac Newton, it's all here in one place. It's rather fantastic. Someone has already done the work for us and uh, done it in this rather fabulous uh, and very expensive style. This is just full of gems and we're just whizzing through it. And the reason we're whizzing through it is because we want to show you another book like this, this time dedicated to Joseph Priestley. Big deal in lots of ways. Let's get the Priestley volume. Let's get Priestley. I mean, this is seriously heavy. So in the case of Isaac Newton, our fanboy was a guy called Charles Turner. That's right. Who's our fanboy this time? Fanboy is James Yates. There we go. Here's our title page, Joseph Priestley and Yates has given himself a fair size point size there as well, hasn't What's he? What's the point of collecting all this stuff without giving yourself a little acknowledgement in the front? So there's a huge index in the front here. Yeah, family tree. Yep. Yeah. Newspaper articles, brochures, buildings and houses associated with him. Priestley's laboratory, wow. Here's an interesting one which you'll recognise. Oh, look at this. Objectivity viewers will know this because we have actually filmed this object itself but it's an interesting illustration because it gives details that we don't have. So this knob at the top is now missing from that object, as is this chain. So this 19th century painting of it actually fills in some details. And you'll remember that it wasn't in working order, which it appears to be here. So this is a broadsheet from the period. Priestley uh, is a renowned scientist today, but at the time he's a very controversial figure. Uh, this is the age of the French Revolution. Priestley is a nonconformist, and he's being pilloried in this, this cartoon for sedition and atheism. So this is sort of like an 
anti-priestly piece of satire in the papers of the day. Exactly right. It would have been printed as a separate item and, and circulated. You can see here someone on their deathbed who is a, a follower of, of Priestley. The Anglican minister here says, no God, who taught you that doctrine? And it's Dr. Priestley, P dash dash S dash dash Y. And here the poor man has been dragged to hell with the rest of the people who, who followed Priestley's teachings. So, okay, well that's a pretty stark message. They're saying follow Priestley's teachings and uh, be damned. It's probable that the town fathers in Birmingham colluded into destroying property of nonconformists. And here we have Dr. Priestley's house being sacked, wrecked, and destroyed and Priestley himself would end up travelling to America and rather nicely we have pictures of his American house in this volume. And there we go, there's his lovely spread in Pennsylvania is it? That's right, yes, Northumberland in the state of Pennsylvania. He did alright didn't he after they trashed his house in the UK, he got a nice place in the States. Not bad, yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed of how quickly we've had to sort of skim through mm. these enormous tomes, but it will make me think twice before I ever call myself a fan of something because Mr. Turner and Mr. Yates, they properly know how to be a fan. They're the high watermark of fandom really, aren't they? Here it is, all the scientific papers of the time. Mm-hmm, some nice plates. <laughs> there it is. Here we go. Pretty much word for word as we saw it handwritten. Absolutely Here it exact. is. An eclipse of the moon, 22nd November 1760, and exactly as we read it before. But there, but there is a question here, Brady, isn't there? Have you discovered the shortest paper ever published in the Philosophical Transactions? That would be good. Is there a shorter one than that? Is there? I don't know. Is this like the Jesus wept of Phil Trans? 